studio, my yoga space is. And we continue with our practice while in lockdown. And the theme for this week is legs. It's standing pose week. And we really think of how to use the leg to carry the upper part of the body well. First pose that we're doing is our first and most basic and most profound standing pose, which is Tadasana, the mountain pose. So you're going to stand with your two feet together. And remember this pose is the pose that you do outside of the yoga room or the yoga class by far the most. We often stand. So we place the feet firmly into the floor and we anchor the four corners of the feet. And we bring special attention when pushing the ball mounts of the big toes into the floor and really lifting the inner legs and rolling them back to the space behind you. So the inner groins are rolling to the space behind you and then the outer calves are rolling back too. So get that action, you can see on my legs. Inner groins back, outer calves back. And then, butter flesh is moving down towards the heels. I'm lifting my front body. And then roll the shoulders back. So you bring the shoulder blades into the body. And then you extend into your fingertips. Now, being here, you really should get that feeling of extension. You are extending into the crown of the head. And pushing the feet firmly into the floor. So, connecting with the earth element and the space, the sky element. Now from here, take an inhalation and stretch your hands up into Uddhvahastasana. So it's a full extension. Now keep on stretching. Now I'm going to take my hands down, but you keep on stretching. I want you to think of lifting from the hips to the armpits. So get that action. You're lifting from the hips to the armpits. And then from the armpits into the fingertips. Then rest the abdomen back towards the spine and keep on extending. So the side body is stretching and the legs is holding the torso and the torso can really extend. Keep on stretching into the fingertips, activate the legs and have a soft smile on your face and even breaths. Now when you bring the hands down, you're not going to collapse the sides of the body. Keep it upright. So hips to armpit is still steady. Now from here, you bring your two elbows to face each other. So I'll show this from the side also. So elbows in line with the um, shoulders and the hands on top of the elbows. Now you're going to bring your left elbow on the inside of the right elbow and interlock. Garudasana arms, so you bring the elbows forwards and the hands up. Keep the alignment of the elbows and the shoulders, hands on top of the elbows. Now you stay there for a moment, get your breath and think of this wonderful opening of the back muscles. Feel that little stretch of the fascia of the connective tissue, really opening up the body. Get your, get, take two more breaths here. Make sure that the inner groins are still going back, out the calves back. And lift from the hips. And the gaze is soft. Now when you release, you just come down with the hands, but you don't let the rest of the body sag. Now you bring the elbows again, the palms to face, elbows up. Right elbow on the inside of the left. Extend that elbow forwards in line with its own shoulder. And keep the hands on top of the elbows and forwards and up stretch. Navel back, buttocks down, buttock flesh down to the floor, to the heels. Even breaths. And feel that opening of the back muscles. And then release. And back to your Tadasana. For a moment, just soften your knees. Have softness in the body as we release. We're going to do the Mukhasana, which is the interlocking of the hands like this, the cow face pose. Um, and we're only doing the, the arm action, so it's all to warm the upper body as preparation for the standing poses. So if you need a strap for this pose, you get a strap. You place the strap over the right shoulder. I'll do mirror image. Draw 
the shoulders back. Re-establish your Tadasana, lift from the hips to the armpits, roll the shoulders back. You're going to bring your left arm in between your shoulder blades, your hand, in between the two shoulder blades and take the shoulder back. Take the right arm up, turn the palm, inhale as you exhale, interlock the two, the two hands or hold the strap if you need the strap. And now lift the left side of the body and bring that right outer armpit forward and get your breath there. Quiet, even breath. Elongate into the crown of the head and elongate the two elbows in opposite directions, but maintain the space from your left hip to your left armpit. Take a full breath there. When you release, the body is still absolutely holding itself. You're not collapsing. Just let the arms go. Then you place the strap over your left shoulder. Back to your Tadasana. Bring that right hand between your shoulder blades. The rotation comes from the shoulder. And you take the left hand up, turn the palm and interlock. So you are now once again stretching the elbows in opposite directions. Your left armpit is coming forwards and you are lifting from the right hip to the right armpit. So get that openness. So legs firm, you're becoming light because the legs are working. Even breaths. And release, keep the body, let go of the arms and for a moment soften the body. Okay, so now the next pose that you're going to do is your tree pose, Brikshasana. Now, many of you use support when you do this pose. You can have a chair for your hands. You can be against the wall with the knee. You can have a strap around your ankle. You know what you need. So let's do it together. You stand in your Tadasana. Plant your right leg firmly into the floor. Take hold of your left ankle and bring the foot high up onto the inside of your right leg. So if the balance goes, you just use your support. Now you've got to elongate that inner groin to the inner knee and you have to pull that outer knee into the hip of your left leg. So you're firm there and teachers can also fall, so be with me. Now in this moment, you've got to really think of pushing the ball mount of your standing leg firmly into the floor, lift the spine, you can take the arms out to the side if you feel that there's a problem with balance. Hands and namaste, and if you're ready, you can stretch your hands to the ceiling. Now you push your left foot into the inner leg as much as you push that inner leg into the sole of the foot. Open up, even breaths. Look at a spot in front of you that doesn't move. Get your breath. And release. Step down. Okay, so the important thing here is that you must just remember if you have problems taking the foot high up, don't let it rest into the knee joint. It mustn't push, push into the knee. Then you rather put the foot lower or even on the floor. So it's all about finding balance wherever you are with this pose. It's no competition. Okay. And you can see you've got to be very humble. If you fall out of this pose, rather laugh. Be light with it. It's often the ego that is interfering here. So you stand firm. Your left leg is growing into the floor already, making roots to anchor you. Get that feeling. Then you take hold of the right ankle. You put the foot where you know it should be. The higher up, the better. But if it can't, it can't. And you extend that inner groin to the inner knee and you pull that outer knee into its uh, hip. And then, depending on your balance, what you need, maybe you want to take the arms out to the side, bring the hands and namaste, and if you're ready, you take the arms up. Now, you're, you're really working from your outer left thigh, push into the sole of the right foot. Have the ball mount of the big toe of your left foot really into the floor. So extend, so it's the outer left thigh into the right sole of the foot and the standing leg grounding itself. Take a breath, release the arms, release the leg and get your breath. Now you might want to soften your knees, just be for a moment, get your breath back. 
Now we're going to start to have fun. You need a wall and a chair into the wall. Now I put my chair in such a way that at least the front legs are on a sticky mat. If you're tall and you need lots of uh, space on your mat, you want to pull your sticky mat a little bit more into the room. We're going to work on our trikonasana, our triangle pose. Uttita trikonasana is the full name, extended triangle pose. Now just observe here. I'm going to place the ball mount of my foot onto the chair to push into the chair. And then you take your time, you hop back until you've got a nice wide pose and I can stretch this leg. So there we go. I'm in trikonasana except that my one foot is high up. And from here, we're going to extend, reach, find the ankle, and from there, take the arm up to the ceiling. Okay, so we're going to do it together. So you face me, possibly. You're going to put your uh, right foot onto the chair. We're not going to do exact mirror image. So put your right foot onto the chair, onto the seat of the chair. Then hop your left foot back. If you want to do the other leg because you want to see me, you know what to do. So your heel and your inner arch of your foot is in a line, just like in classical trikonasana. And be a little bit wider than you think you should be. And you turn your back toes slightly in. Place the hands on the hips. Now extend, push into the chair with the leg. Take your hand up to the ceiling. Reach. For me it's the right hand and I find my right ankle. I lightly hold the ankle or wherever you reach and then I rotate my torso. I take my top shoulder well back. And I really... Feel the action in both feet. And then take your top hand up. For me, it's the left. Stretch. Inhale as you exhale. Maybe you can extend the crown of the head more and more. And you're rotating the abdomen, the chest and the shoulder to the ceiling. Get your breath here. Take two breaths. And then to come out, top hand to the hip. Bend your front leg and just push yourself away so that you come out with a slightly bent knee which makes it softer. You're going to see my backside now because there's no wall for me here and you definitely need a wall for the, for the chair otherwise it slips. Turn around and put your other foot on the chair. For me it's the left foot. And then take your feet wide. So this is going to be more of a silent demo so that you can see. Okay. Widen if you need to. And take your top hand up. Take two full breaths here. And then hand to the hip, bend the knee, and step down. Okay, so now just in between, let's have a little break here. You're going to put your hands on the backrest of the chair and feet underneath the hips. And Ardha Uttanasana, you have a stretch. So place yourself in the position. Once you're there, push your inner feet into the floor. Take your outer ankle bones in and lift your inner, from your, your inner ankle, lift up into the inner leg, into the inner groin. Abdomen to the spine and you're extending your fingers over the backrest of the chair. Don't grip, don't hold, extend. Lift your buttock bones to the ceiling. Take a full breath in and a full breath out here. And then step towards the chair and come. Okay. So let's stretch the legs a little bit more. Get a strap. And your uh, chair is once again into the wall. And let me just show you here. There's options here. So I put the strap over my foot. And I stand in Tadasana. And then you put your foot Either onto the seat of the chair, depends on your hamstrings. Some of you might be able to put the foot 
on the back rest. And if you're very flexible, the foot can go higher up the wall. So we're going to be here for a moment and just get that openness in the legs. And if you know that you can go a little bit higher, you do so. So get your strap, scarf, anything that serves for that. And standing Tadasana. Face your wall, face your chair. So the two feet are together. Now it's very important the moment we take the foot up, the floor foot tends to turn out. Keep it anchored the way it is. Put the strap over the wall mount of your right foot. And then you can just step onto your chair seat for a moment. Get your stability. This is maybe the spot where you're going to stay because your hamstring says so. If not, you might want to walk a little bit closer and get your foot onto the backrest. And now you make sure that your left toes are pointing straight forward. The strap is over the ball mount of the foot and I hold with wide elbows so that I can bring my shoulder blades in and lift my chest. Now firm your standing leg, your left leg, and then roll the right hip down towards the floor. And push the right ball mount of the big toe firmly into the wall. Take the abdomen to the spine, get your, get your breath here. Don't look down, look ahead of you. Even lift your chin a little bit higher just to get a sense of lightness of uplifting the spirit. Take three breaths here. And then you step first onto the chair and then down. Put the strap over the ball mount of the left foot and then you know your height now. First of all, bend knee onto the seat of the chair. Then you decide do you want to extend it there or lift the foot up. Get it on the right height. Make sure that your right foot is disciplined. Tadasana foot, looking straight forward. And then you put your left foot on the support. You hold with those slightly opened up elbows to lift the chest into the body. The shoulder to, to lift the chest or the shoulder blades into the body, excuse me. And you are rotating the left hip down to the floor and get your breath. So standing foot firmly into the floor, outer standing leg, right leg, thigh to the bone. Think for a moment what or feel what happens if you lift your pelvic floor. So pelvic floor engage and there's lightness in the upper body. Three breaths. Extend that, that uh, left foot ball mount into the wall. Really into the wall. And the gaze, soft, chin, you know what to do. It's not dropping. Work the legs, bring the muscles to the bone. And then step down and release. Now we're going to now do Ardha Chandrasana with the wall, with the chair at the wall. So, my chair is in the correct position and I'm just demonstrating first, just watch. I step my foot, uh, let me just get my, my belt. So let's start again. So just look, my foot is slightly ahead of my chair seat, about 30 centimeters. And my alignment of my feet are, like we know, for standing poses, you in an arch alignment. Now, the important thing is here to bend this leg. The toes are pointing straight ahead. When I go up, my hand is on the little toe side of the chair seat. So you have that alignment. Don't bring the hand in, then the body will fall over. So I keep the knee bent. I first check I've got balance there already. Then I slowly start lifting this leg by straightening my standing leg. If you need to bend this arm on the chair seat, you're welcome to do so. And then gradually lift that back leg more and more and more. Extend into the crown of the head. If you've got your balance, you take your arm up to the ceiling. And from there, bend me, step down. Okay, let's do it together. We face each other first. I've got my right leg forward, you can put your left leg forward. Depends on your setup. Your wall might be on the other side. So I've got right leg forward. If you choose to do the other one, we'll just swap next time. Okay, so you now make sure that that front foot is a tadasana foot. It's glued to the floor. It's already a bent knee. I hop in and I place my hand more on the little toe side. So it will become under it will be under my shoulder when I'm in the pose. 
And then when I go up, I still have a bent leg. I slowly start straightening this leg. And then if you need to bend your elbow of the arm on the, on the chair, you do so. You don't want to feel imbalanced. Look, look, look. If it's possible for you, you take that arm up to the ceiling, but it's not a must. And lift your standing leg, uh, your raised leg a little bit more. Exhale, hand on the hip, bend the knee and step back. Ardha Chandrasana, the half moon pose. Beautiful pose. And actually today is full moon. And it's nearly full moon. Uh, it, um, um, it's today, it's the 7th of May. And in an hour or so, it's officially full moon. So what a day to do half moon pose. Okay, so um, turn around. For me, it's the left foot forward. And I've got my right foot in alignment. I bend the knee and I place the hand on the chair seat. Remember, little toe side. And then from there, first checking, have I got balance on my standing foot? If I know I've got balance, then I start lifting that top, that bottom, back leg up. Lift it, lift it, lift it. Rotate, rotate, rotate. And take the hand up if there's balance. So think, I'm going to come down, you stay. Think of lifting that inner groin of your back leg up to the ceiling. And as I said, if you need, if you feel that the chair is too high for you, you just bend the elbow. Quietness, extension and openness. Inhale as you exhale, bend the knees, step back, come up, feet together and we look at each other. Okay, we're going to end with a classical Trikonasana and a classical Ardhashanasana. So let's go together. So you can now take your chair away from the wall, stand in the middle of your mat, we'll do together. Tadasana, shoulders roll back. Middle fingers touch, bend your knees and with the inhalation, you step or jump your feet apart. Now you turn, I'm going to do mirror image, you turn your right leg out from its hip and the left toes in slightly. Now inhale, as you exhale, you extend your right arm, find the leg wherever is appropriate and take the left arm up. Now, the right buttock bone must roll towards me. Open up, elongate. Find even pressure in your left foot and your right foot. They are evenly working and weight bearing. Take up two full breaths here. Now keep the legs very firm to lift the upper body and turn the feet to the front. Take your left toes slight, uh, out and your right toes in slightly. So you turn the whole right uh, left leg from its own hip. Exhale, inhale, extend to the left and stretch your right hand up to the ceiling. Roll the left buttock bone forwards, open the chest to the ceiling. Full breaths here. Make sure that the right leg is working as much as the left leg is working. The right foot, the left foot. Exhale. Keep the legs firm and up you come. Feet to the front. Zigzag your feet if you need to. And get your two feet together. So the last standing pose of the day is Ardha Chandrasana, which you can do with the chair if that worked for you. Remember, some of us need a wall, and to do it with a wall will look like this. So you will know, because you are all my students and you know what you're doing, and you stretch. So that is a very uh, good way to do this pose also. Okay. If you need blocks for your hands, you put two blocks on either side. I trust that you know where you're going here, or you go back to the chair way that we just did. Jump your feet apart. Ardha Chandrasana. Take your right leg out, left toes in, put your left hand on your hip. Now just as if the chair is waiting for you there, you bend the knee. 
you hop in. You place your hand on the block or on the floor, whatever you prefer. And it's little toe side and under my shoulder. Now my balance is here. Before I take the leg up, the balance is already there. Then you straighten the leg. Flex the foot. Rotate the abdomen, the hip. Extend into your top leg. And take the arm up to the ceiling. Lift that back, back leg if you can a little bit more. Both legs firm. Bend the knee. And just step back. Feet to the front. Okay, make sure that you're not too close to a wall. Sometimes we collide with the wall in this pose. Spread the legs. Take the left foot out, right toes in. And from here, remember I bend, I see the chair already there if needed. And I hop in. I place the hand underneath my shoulder and I've got my balance. I don't take the leg up before I've got balance and then I lift and I rotate to the ceiling, flexing that foot and really extending up. Take a full breath, lift the leg a little bit higher, bend the knee, step back, and up to front. Even breaths here. Okay, so we'll do one seated twist before we lie down for Shavasana. So get a chair, and if you have something to put under your foot, like a wooden block or a stack of bones, you get so. And we sit looking at each other. So I'm putting my right uh, left foot on a block for you. It will possibly be the other foot. And my knee is slightly over my foot. And I'm going to extend my other leg forwards. And there's a little gap in between. And I sit upright. Now I'm going to be twisting away from my bent knee. So I take my left arm up for you, it might be right. Elbow in front of that knee. And then I rotate my shoulder back and I hold the back wrist. And I hang a little bit on that back wrist to extend. I take an inhalation and as I exhale, I turn to look towards the ceiling. For me, it's the right side. Keep on opening up. Even breath, so I'm slightly hanging on the chair, my spine is elongating, and I have freedom in my spine to rotate here. And I'm working my bent knee into my elbow. I have one more inhalation, full exhalation, lift your pelvic floor and turn more. Keep the spine long as you come up. And then we put the block. Underneath the other foot. So it's much better if you really are on a sticky mat here with that block so that it can't move. Sit upright. Arm up of the bent knee. Wedge it in front. And then I roll my shoulder back and I hold the back wrist. And I, I grip with my fingers and I hang slightly to elongate my spine. And you keep on turning there. I just want to make sure we've got it right and you can see me from the side. And just have a look if you have any doubts. You find your position on the chair that just serves you well there. And there's that freedom in the pose as you turn. Freedom in the pose. Full inhalation, complete exhalation, pelvic floor lift and turn more. And then come back to the center, place the two feet on the floor. And you are going to prepare for Shavasana. So of course if you want to do your headstand, your Shishasana in between, you do it now and then you do a shoulder stand afterwards. You know you must do a shoulder stand after headstand. But for today, I am going to stop here. It's up to you to do the rest. If you want to lie in Shavasana with the legs resting over a chair, you're welcome to do so. If you want to lie flat, you're welcome to do so. So place yourselves evenly. Remember, don't skip Shavasana.
It is the perfect thing to do at the end of your practice. It rounds up your practice and you prepare for Shavasana. Think of that. You do the whole class so that you're ready to receive the peace and calm of a beautiful Shavasana because you've opened up the body to receive. And then bring your awareness to your breath. And you stay as long as you need here. And I say to you, may you walk with grace. And may the light of the universe shine upon our paths. Namaste.